there are a couple of new formulas here, three new formulas. Uh, two of them relate to compound interest, and the other one is, is the effective annual yield, where you'll have an interest rate of, you know, 14%, and then it's compounded daily. And we know that if we compound the interest a little bit more often, that it's actually going to bump up the simple interest rate from or the annual interest rate or the annual percentage rate or, or just the rate. Uh, all of these words we use for the same kind of thing. And so the question is, you know, if you take into consideration all that, all that compounding, what is the real simple interest rate, the annual percentage rate in one year? It goes up slight, it turns out it goes up slightly from 14, which is what the advertised amount is. It goes up a little bit. So it might be 14.2 or something like that. But here are the formulas. N is the total number of compounding periods. And so a lot of times in these formulas, we uh, don't write it this way, but rather we write it this way. A equals P times one plus. All right, now the R is the, what they call the nominal rate. It's like the uh, advertised rate, but then you throw in the compounding factor and it bumps up that annual percentage rate to a little bit more. And so instead of this I, a lot of times what we see is I divided by N, or excuse me, R divided by N. So the relationship is that the interest, the per period interest rate, you take the annual rate and divide it by the number of times you're going to compound the interest. So this, this N represents the number of compounding periods. So we have only a few um, possible values of N that we use in these problems, and they correspond with different time periods. Um, and for daily, they might use 365 or they might use 360. But if interest is compounded annually, then we would use N is equal to one. If interest is compounded semi-annually, so you're gonna look for, for these words in the problems, and then that translates into the corresponding value of N. Uh, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily, and then we have a new one, which is continuous, uh, continuously. But the continuously formula has its own formula. We'll get to that later. Now, the other thing is that um, the exponent here is n. So that's the number of compounding periods. So if you have three years and you're compounding monthly, that means you're going to be compounding at the end of each month and calculating the interest. And if you do that every month, there's 12 in a year, and you do it for three years, then the number of compounding period periods is 36. So what we usually see up here is n times t. Take the number of years, multiply it by the number of compounding periods, and you get uh, n times t. So here is an abbreviated version, and here's kind of more the expanded version. I do have to um, redefine this. Maybe I'll call it m just so we use a different value. And this one is also m. And I'll define M here to be the number of compounding periods in one year. All right, so what I defined down here were not really the N values, but they were really the M values. I want to break it up this way because all of those pieces kind of coincide with versions of the TVM solver on the, on the calculator. But this is the compound interest rate, and um, we have technology now that can calculate the interest after each month, after each day, and add that to the balance. All right, so let's use this formula here and this information that they have, and we'll do one of these problems. So let's start off maybe with uh, number 10. Uh, this is not uh, a very interesting problem, but it, because it gives you all these values, but as you're doing these, start thinking about, you know, maybe what these values mean in possible applications, but we certainly will get to applications. Okay, so here's the, the formula, and they're going to be using this one here at the top, and you'll notice that there are one, two, three, four different variables in there, and so if they give us three of those missing variables, we can use algebra to find the missing four. 
So we're going to plug in, we're looking for A. So I'll leave A blank, and that's equal to P. We now know P is in this problem is 5,000. And then come the parentheses, one plus, well, they give us I. That's the per period interest rate. And then they give the number of periods is 36. <laughs> All right, so if the annual percentage rate, so I'm going to throw in some terms in here. If the annual percentage rate is 6%, that's the value of R. And if the compounding factor, if the interest is compounded monthly, then using my variables over there, that the M would be equal to 12, 6% as a decimal. All right, let's calculate I and let's calculate N. I is going to be equal to R over M. And so in this case, if we had 0 0.06 and divided by 12, we would get 0 0.005. And then the value of N is equal to M times T. And let's say T is equal to three years. So we would have 12 times three or 36. All right, the reason I, I went on this kind of tangent is because I wanted to show you that if they give you instead the annual interest rate and the compounded period, compounding peer, um, factor, then you can actually calculate I to be 0 0.05 and N to be 36. So they're giving you this formula, but a lot of times they'll give it in, in this formula. And if they do, then you'll have to do these calculations for I and for N. All right, this is just a calculator exercise. And so let's go ahead and plug it all in there. 5,000, uh, 1.005, all well, this adds up to, you know, to the 36. So 5,000 times 1.05 to the 36. And this will always give you the um, total amount earned. And you're going to see lots of uh, problems in this section where they say, what, uh, what, is the, you know, what, did, what is the interest earned? And so if you know you started with 5,000, this would be your principal. If you subtract the principal from the ending amount, everything left is the interest. So the interest calculation is just a subtraction. And they'll ask you about it um, in some of these problems that you see today, but more specifically in the next couple of sections. All right, now if they give you the, the A value, but don't give you the P value, then you got to solve a linear equation. Not going to spend time on that. Okay, uh, here's some uh, exercises that allow you to see the, the relationship between the, the given interest rate and the compounding period, and then to find I. So what you need to know here is that I is equal to the annual interest rate divided by this compounding factor. And I wrote it up here, but it's in these problems that you actually use it. Okay, so for 22, we know that the R is this is called the nominal rate and we always enter decimals into our formulas for R and then the compounded monthly suggests that the M value the compounding factor is 12. So all you have to do here is to take the decimal form of the interest rate divided by the compounding factor and that's going to be the value of I that you would plug into that formula above. And if you wanted to know the interest rate, you could convert that, that decimal into a percent. And I think these problems down here would, uh, it says use the given interest rate um, I per compounding factor to find R, the annual interest rate. So if you charge 1.73 for half a year, then double it to find what you charge for the whole year. You can think of it that way. All right, for a half year, M is equal to two. For a quarter, M is equal to four. For a month, M is equal to 12. And for a day, 
Um, okay, so 360 or 365. Uh, they might give you some instructions to say, you know, use 360 uh, where you need to. And then this number here is 0 0.0173. So it says use the given interest rate and then the compounding factor to find R. So and this is what they're giving you, the value of M and the value of R, um, I, I mean. And you have to calculate the, the R that goes with it. Just be careful with your decimals. All right, so you see this formula right here. It's not too difficult in algebra. If you just multiply both sides by R, um, excuse me, if you multiply both sides by M, the left side becomes I times M, and the right side, the M's cancel, so you have R. So basically all you're required to do in here is just to take the I value and the M value and multiply them together and that gives you the interest rate. So if you've earned 1.57% per quarter, just multiply 1.57% by four to find out what the annual interest rate is. So for 29, it would be what? 3.46, 1.57 times four, 6.28. And, you know, where, where this would be uh, applicable is that, you know, when you start um, with your full time job and, and presumably you'll have you'll be saving for your invest uh, for your retirement and you might have a 401k and you might ask yourself at some point, you know, well, what did I make last quarter? And so you can actually calculate from the beginning of the quarter to the end of the quarter what the rate is. And you say that that's, you know, that's the rate. And what a lot of financial guys like to do is they say, well, gee, you made one point five seven in the quarter that annualizes to 6.28. And so you can, uh, you can say, gee, if I keep going at this rate, I'm gonna make 6.28% this year in my investments. So it's, you know, these tricks that the, your financial advisors will use, and maybe some of you wanna become a financial advisor, but there's a lot of math in this section that'll help you get to these numbers quickly. Okay, let's take a look at the next formula. And this one is also compound interest. But it turns out that what if you wanted to compound interest more than daily, more than 365? What if you wanted to compound interest a billion times? Turns out our formula still works. Um, you can still do it. But billion is getting very close to compounding interest now, and then now, and then now, and then now. So why don't we just let it go to infinity and com uh, com uh, determine what the uh, interest is if we compounded every instant? And it turns out that there's a limiting value that A will approach. But here is the continuous interest formula. The A is the same thing as it was defined before, future value. Uh, the P is the same thing that it was defined as before, which was what you have presently. Call that the present value. And you do have two variables, R and T, but in, an R is the, you know, the APR, the annual percentage rate, sometimes called the nominal rate, and the T again is the number of years. So I'm just kind of redefining and letting you know that all the variables that you use in this new formula are um, the same ones that you've used in the past. Um, it just turns out, all right, so there's a new number in here, E. This is the natural number. It's natural because it's used in lots of um, exponential growth models and it occurs naturally. And it's like pi in the sense that it's a irrational number. So, you know, the, you know, the, the number of decimals I think that you might get if you type it into your calculator would be all of these and those decimals just continue on and there's no repeating pattern, there's no terminating pattern, they don't stop and then become all zeros. So it's an irrational number like pi that no one can ever remember or ever to calculate all the decimals of it. But for our problems, you know, maybe if you stop right there, 2.718, then you'll be close enough. Our calculator has E in two places. Right above the natural log key that says e to the x, I know you can't see that very well, e to the x, second, ln x, or just ln. 
together, you get e to the x. And the other place that it appears, if you just want the number e, is above the division sign in blue. So let me just type that to the screen. See it there, e? There it is. So it's got digits up to here. The other key assumes that you're going to have an exponent. So if you hit the second key and then ln, then you have e, and then it automatically throws in the, the caret. So it anticipates that you're going to take it to the first power. If you take it to the first power, you're going to get the same thing as we got by just using e, because e is e to the first power. But usually you're going to have um, a number like you'll have an interest rate like um, 0 0.06, that r is in the exponent here, and then a number of years, maybe eight years. So you'll be doing things like this e to the interest rate times number of years, e to the interest rate times number of years. You still have to multiply by p. But this is if interest is compounded continuously. All right, I'm going to try number 16. Now, here it is. You have uh, a is 19,000, and then p is what we're looking for. Then you have e, and then in the exponent up here, you're going to take the interest rate as a decimal, 0 0.0769, and then you're going to multiply that by the number of years. So it looks like that. So the way that I'm going to evaluate this is I'm going to punch this into my calculator, just that stuff in parentheses, get that number, and then I'm going to divide both sides of the equation using algebra to get p by itself. So I'm going to take 0 0.0769 times 5. And all of that is in the exponent, and you have to put the entire exponent on your calculator in parentheses. Otherwise, it'll use the order of operations and use only the first number, 0.0769, as the exponent of E, and then it'll multiply by 5 later. All right, so uh, one intermediate step, and we have P times 1.468. I know this is tedious, but if you want to get the right answer, <laughs> you should list all decimal places of accuracy on your calculator. All right, and then I'm gonna take 1900 and divide both sides. So I'm gonna divide by that number. And that number is the, uh, the last answer on my calculator. So I'm going to divide by the last answer. And then I'm gonna look back and make sure that this is a reasonable answer. I'm gonna round it to the nearest penny. Well, if we invest uh, 12,900, we should have more in the future if we're earning 7% after five years. And notice the amount we have at the end is 19,000. So that close to 13,000 grew over five years up to 19,000 just in interest. All right, there's so many other problems that I think are more important to you than these down here. So if we have time, we'll come back to this and I'll solve an equation for you in, in logarithms. And I'll include one in the notes but I don't want to take valuable class time to actually work through the, um, the logarithm calculations that you need there. How long will it take uh, money to triple if it's invested at 5% compounded daily? And what about 6% compounded continuously? So these are two different problems. The first one, because there's daily compounding, you can actually identify the value of M, the compounding factor, to be 365. So you're not going to use the continuous interest formula on that first part. But in the second one, it does say compounded 6% compounded continuously. So you're actually going to use the continuous compounding formula for that second part. Now, when they do problems like this triple, what they're really giving you when they say that is they're giving you the A and the P value together. So what you can do is you can choose any P value, say you choose $100, triple it to get 300 and let a be 300. So just choose a number to triple. All right, so here they are. Uh, the first one is daily, and the other one is continuous. The interest rate over here is 6%, and the interest rate here is 5%. I will choose P to be 1,000, in which case A would be 3,000. Mathematicians would not like this. They would say, well, you don't know that it's 1,000, so what you need to use instead are p and then 3p. So whatever p is, triple it and you'll get 3p. Okay, so compounded daily, we have a equals p, and I'm going to use 1 plus 
r over m to the mt. Our author likes us to put a or i in here for r over m and then calculate the r first and then calculate the exponent next. I prefer not. All right, so we have 3p and p. If you don't like 3p and p, then use 1,000 and 3,000. You'll see that they're equivalent. Because the first step we're going to do is we're going to divide by that 1,000. And you're going to get 3 by itself on the left. Same thing here. If we divide by p, both sides, we're going to get 3 on the left. OK, so the interest rate is 0 0.05 divided by 3. I'll just use 365 here. And if I use 365 there, I have to use 365 in the exponent. And uh, this is another one that's like this, where you have to find the T. I'm going to go to the TVM solver. I indicated that we were going to use this today. I just can't find it now. But you're going to spend a lot of time in this menu. So in the apps menu right here of your calculator, and brings up this menu, we want the math of finance, number one. And then the, the TVM solver, this is time value of money. Okay, this N here is like the little N in our formula. It's equal to the exponent here. The problem is we don't know what the exponent is. So I'm just going to skip that one, come down to the interest rate. One of the things that's different from the TVM solver and the values that you plug into formulas is that if you wanted to plug R, the interest rate, into a formula, you plug it in as a decimal. On the TVM solver, you plug it in as a percent. And so our interest rate is 5%. So we're going to put 5 there as opposed to 0 0.05, which is what we usually put. Uh, the present value, well, this is not going to work with P and 3P. So here's where I'm going to have to put 1,000 and end up with 3,000. Oops. 3,000. And the reason I put a negative there is because it's like we're investing money. So it's cash out, we invest it, and then it comes back as positive 3,000 in the end. The payments per year, we don't have any payments, but the compounding periods per year, 365. So I'm going to let both of these numbers be 365. Uh, we'll see what payments per year means uh, later in the next section. And then we're always going to have that the interest is calculated at the end of the period. And that's what this means. So all of these numbers we know except that top one. And that top one is what we're after. Now that top number is 365 times, don't remember me typing this in, 365M. So we're going to calculate this number, and then we're going to divide by 365 to find out what um, the time would be, how many years. Oops, you can't do that. So how long will it take? So we're looking for really the n. So it's 365 times the number of years. All right. So I'm going to calculate that. And there it is. 8,020. I'm going to go to the end of that number and divide by 365. And so it's going to take close to 22 years is what this means for your money to triple at 5%. So if you have a million dollars, it'll triple to $3 million after 22 years if you earn 5% what that means. Anyways, I claim that if you solve this, you're going to find t is equal to 21.97375, or about 22 years. All right, we're not done with this problem because we still have to calculate 6% continuous interest. All right, so here's what it would look like. Again, um, look at this after class. I'm just going to kind of go through it quickly just so you can see how logs work. We have 3P is equal to PE, and the interest rate is 0 0.06, and then we have T. The first step is to divide by P, so those P's cancel, and you get this. Now, if you used 1,000 and 3,000, this is the equation that you would end up after you cancel the thousands. If you used a million and three million, this is the equation that you'd end up after you divided both sides by a million. All right, here's where the logs come in. Take the natural log of both sides. Over on the left-hand side, you have the natural log of three. And when you compose the natural log function, as you've learned from your algebra course, and the exponential function, they kind of, they're inverses of one, one another. 
So when you apply a natural log to, a, to a, a, an exponential expression like this, they kind of cancel one another out. And what's left is only the exponent. All right, so this one's not so bad. So we divide by 0 0.06. So those cancel and we get T is equal to number of years. I'm gonna take the natural log of three and then divide by 0 0.06. Now, if you remember what happened on the other one, the other one we had six, we had 5% interest and it took 22 years to triple. This one, we have a higher interest rate. So it's gonna take significantly less time than 22 years. How many years is it? 18, 18.31. Right, so about just, just over 18 years there. All right, the last formula is the effective annual yield. And they say annual percentage yield here. Sometimes we call it the effective annual yield. There are two formulas that use all the variables that we've been using, the T and the M and the N and the, but they don't use the A and the P. So the A and the P are out of this formula. And we have two formulas. One, if we know a compounding factor, M, and the other one, if we have continuous interest. So the idea here is that they report a nominal rate like 6%, but if they compound interest, it's actually the simple interest rate in the year is actually a little bit more than 6%. What is that little bit more is what we're asking. What is the interest rate if you thought of it as a simple one-year interest rate? Yeah, so here's a, a nice little thing here. It says that this interest rate is more important than the nominal rate because the nominal rate is not quite accurate. All right, so maybe we'll do um, number 52. In a lot of these problems, they want you to compare. And so uh, what's a better annual percentage yield? If you earn 4.32% compounded monthly, or if you earn 4.31% compounded daily, which one will actually give you in one year the highest interest rate? And the answer to that question is the effective annual yield the annual percentage yield. All right, in this formula, you'll know you only need M and R. So if you can uh, identify M and R, you're good to go. Well, we have R, that's 0 0.0432, and we have M because the interest is compounded monthly. In the second problem, we have R. Again, we're gonna use the decimal version, and we have M. I'll use 365. You can use 360 if you want. There's not a significant change. Okay, so for this one, we have the yield is 1 plus 0 0.0432 divided by 12. You're going to take that entire sum to the 12th power, and when you're done, subtract 1 at the end. And the second one is very similar. 1 plus 0 0.0432, but we're now dividing by 365, and then the exponent becomes 365. Now, this is going to give you a new interest rate, so once you get that new interest rate, you're going to want to convert it to a percentage. So here's what the, uh, the calculator looks like, and you can just type it all in on one line. Uh, 1 plus 0 0.0432 divided by 12. All right, so all of that is in parentheses. Then we're raising that to 12 and subtracting 1. So notice, see how close it is to 4.432? It's just a little bit higher. So this one is 4.4, I'll call it 1. If you want 07. The next one, the interest rate goes down a little bit. And we do 365. And then the exponent is 365 as well. And this one, all right, so 0 0.04406570079. And this one is 0 0.04403963733. So this one would be 4.40%. All right, so you can see they're very, very, very close there, both of those. And the other thing I want to point out, as I said before, as you go from the nominal rate to the effective rate, there's gonna be just a slight increase due to the compounding factor. It's not gonna be, a, you know, it's not gonna take the interest rate from 3% from up to 14%. It's gonna take it just up of maybe a 10th of a percent. 
is the way it's going to work. Okay, and then here are some applications, but I want to do the applications on, on the TVM solver of the calculator. And so maybe we'll look at uh, number 56. How, well, that's the how long one again. How long, how long, how long? Okay, how about this one? How much should you uh, deposit now if you want to have $6,000 in the future? So in the TVM solver, we have N, that's the number of payment or compounding periods. And so this would be the little m times the t. So if the interest is compounded monthly for three years, you would put in 12 times three or 36 would go in there. So that's equivalent to the little n in their formula at the beginning. The next one is I percent. And remember, we're going to, this is the nominal rate. And what's important here is you want to put it in there as a percent. So we would put in eight. Compounded quarterly, that's four times, and we'll do A, so three, which is 12. The next one is the present value. This is how much you start with, and this is what we're trying to find. Uh, the payment, uh, we will get into the payment, but this payment means what are the regular uh, payments. And we're not making regular payments. We're just starting with an initial amount up front, and we want to see that it grows to $6,000. The uh, payments per year and the compounding year per year for us, um, it's going to be the compounding factor. And since we're compounding quarterly, both of these numbers will be four. So we're going to start, I'm just going to put a zero here and come back to it. 6,000, and then this would be four. Notice when I hit four here and hit enter, it's going to automatically change that one to four. All right, we have everything uh, that the problem has given us except the thing that we want to calculate, and that's the present value. Don't be alarmed if this is a negative number because this means cash out is going to be a negative. You're taking it out, you're investing it, and then the cash is going to come back with interest in the future. So in order to calculate this, there is a key down here that says solve, and you'll notice that it's in green. So to use the TVM solver and to solve this, you want to hit the green key and then enter. And, it's, and you want to do it when the thing you're trying to calculate, the cursor is right in that row. So I'm going to do alpha. Notice that the cursor will change to an A, the alpha numeric. And then I'm going to hit enter. And there it gives you the, uh, the answer. So the answer to this problem is forget the negative. That's just cash out. Round that number to the nearest penny. And that would be your answer to this one. So if you took $4,730.96 and you invested it at 8% compounded quarterly, three years from now, you'd have $6,000.